Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we will be talking about the traveling salesperson problem and how to solve it using a genetic algorithm. Before we start, if you like this channel, please consider checking out the links in the description. There is a link to a book called Grokking Artificial Intelligence Algorithm that has more details about many other different algorithms, including genetic algorithms. For this video we are going to imagine that we owned our own medical supply delivery company and we have to fly around the world in our own plane to deliver important medical supplies in different cities. When we have a set of cities that we need to travel to, ideally we want to find the route that minimizes the distance traveled. This is so we save time and money. This is what is known as the traveling salesperson problem. You have a set of points that you need to visit and you start from your home starting position and you want to find the route that is the minimum distance that visits every single one of these points once. Here's an example of a route that visits every single one of these cities starting from our starting position and we can measure each one of these distances, add all of them together and in this example it gives us 86 units. This might be kilometers, meters, whatever the unit of distance you're using. Here is another example of visiting all of these uh, particular points just once and again if we count the distance this time we have a total of 61 units, a much shorter path. So as you can see the route that you take through all of these points might make a big difference in the total distance that you travel. Solving this problem has a lot of practical applications, not just if you are a delivery company. Imagine for example you are Amazon and you have these huge warehouses filled with items that you want to deliver to your clients. You want your employees to be efficient so you want them to use the minimum path through all the items that they have on their order. Another application of the traveling salesman problem is when you come to design circuits. You want to lay out the different components that you have on a circuit in order to minimize the wiring that you have between them. This is so you make efficient use of the space that you have. One way to go about solving this problem is to check all combinations. This is called the brute force approach. I have here written a program that will allow us to put different points on the world map and it will calculate the shortest distance through all of the points. So let's place a few points over here. Let's start with Spain, then we go to the US, then we have North Africa, I believe this is Mauritania, then we have Greenland, Brazil, and also let's include Madagascar. When I click solve over here, the program is trying every single permutation, which includes all of the points that we have drawn, and it keeps track of the shortest distance, which on this map we're showing with this red path. Once we're finished going through all of the permutations, we're left with the shortest path. If I add just a couple of points, when I hit solve, again, it's going to try every single permutation. However, this time it's going to take a lot longer. This is because the algorithm that we're using, the one that is trying every single permutation, has a runtime complexity of n factorial. And I did a few calculations over here with this particular program, which is not the most efficient. With just eight points, it will take around 11 minutes. With 14 points, it's going to take four to six years. And with 24 points, it's going to take more than a billion years. It's very slow to solve this particular problem in this way. And in fact, there exists a faster algorithm using dynamic programming that has a runtime complexity of n squared times two to the power of n. Although this is a big improvement over our algorithm, it still has an exponential runtime complexity, meaning that it will scale really badly. For this algorithm, for 24 points, the time that it would take to compute the shortest distance would only be five years instead of one billion. Of course, it, this is a huge improvement. However, it's still unusable. We cannot wait that long for just 24 points. Because there is no scalable algorithm that will allow us to solve this in a reasonable time for large number of points, the only thing we can do is come up with an estimate for the solution. And there are various techniques we can do this. For example, we can use something like simulated annealing or ant colony optimization, or the topic of this video, we can use a genetic algorithm to give us a solution that is very close to the shortest distance. A genetic algorithm works in two steps. First, we create an initial population that will contain an initial number of possible solutions. And then we evolve this initial population through a number of generations, and each time we will get closer to the final solution. To show you how we can generate this initial population, let's pick an example over here. I have five different points that I want to visit, starting from point zero. All the points that we want to visit are marked with a different ID. 
We can use a list to represent a path through all of these destinations. For example, the list containing 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 means that we start from 0, then to 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, and then back to 0, back to where we started. So to generate this large population containing different routes visiting all of our points, we can start with this initial list, starting from 0 up to n, n is the number of points that we have, and then we shuffle it, and every time we end up creating a new path. And we can do this a number of times until we have generated our initial population. Let's have a look at how we implement this. I have a function here called generate random path, accepting the total destinations that we have. This is our n. In our example, we have five destinations starting from zero up to four. So in this particular example, total destinations would be five. We start our function by creating a list called random paths. This will contain our initial population. It will be a list of lists. At the end of the function, we simply return this list. Now in this example, I want to generate an initial population of 20,000 paths. So I use a for loop in range of 20,000. And inside this loop, I am going to generate our initial path which starts from one up to the total destinations that we have. Remember that we always start from the position zero, so zero should not be in the random path. And we create this range and we put this range inside the list. Next, we are going to get this random path and we shuffle it. This has the result of creating a random path starting from one. So all we need to do is add zero in front of this random path. And finally, we append this result to our random paths list. And with this function, we will have a population of 20,000 random paths through all the points. I have here written a graphical program that uses this function that represents this visually. On the screen, I have 21 cities that we have to visit with our medical supplies plane. And from that initial population of 20,000 different paths through all of these points, I have picked a random selection of 300 paths, and we are seeing a visual representation of the path that each journey would take. In red, the red plane that you see over here is the shortest distance out of our generated population. And as you can see, if you just follow the red plane, it's not a very efficient journey. There's a lot of zigzagging going around. It is definitely not the most efficient way to travel to all of these cities. On the bottom left, you see also the distance traveled by that red plane. It is 8,600 in this case pixels. Okay, it's not representing any real units of distance. And we will see this improve as we implement our full genetic algorithm. Let's now see how we can do the second part of the genetic algorithm, that of evolving our population of roots to a possible solution. And this part of our algorithm has three steps. The first step is to get our population, the one that we generated in the previous step, and pass it through some sort of a filter and choose the remaining survivors. The second step is to get these survivors and combine them together to produce new solutions. In technical terms, we say we are applying crossovers to our solutions. The third and final step is to apply mutations to our population. The three steps over here mimic biological life. We have survival of the fittest and then with the crossovers and mutations, we have reproduction. And the idea is that we will apply these three steps over and over again until we converge to a solution. Let's now have a look at the first step, that of choosing survivors. And over here, I have written a few examples of our initial population. Each one of these represents a different route through all our points. And the first thing that we are going to do is to shuffle this list around. After that, we are going to divide this list in two equal parts, and we are going to compare each one of these paths with its counterpart. So starting from the top left, we have a path starting from zero, three, then four, then one, then two, and back to zero. And if we compute the total distance of this, for example, let's say it gives us 35. And we do the same thing on its counterpart, the one on the right hand side, and we have zero, two, three, one, and four. And the distance in this case might be something like 55 units. Between these two, the shortest distance is the one on the left. So we eliminate the one on the right. And we do the same thing for our entire list. The one on the left is 43, and the one on the right is 41, so we cross the one on the left. And we do the same thing with the rest of the list. At the end, we are left with the surviving roots. If we move on to the implementation of this, we have over here two functions. One is called total distance, accepting a list of points. These are all the points that we want to visit. In our example, we had five points from zero to four. 
and we have a path that we want to take through these points, like for example the path starting from 0, 3, 4, 1 and 2. And this function returns the total distance if we had to walk that entire path. It's doing this by iterating over each point and summing up the distance between that point and the previous one. The other function that we have over here is called choose survivors, again accepting this list of points, and an old generation variable. This is a list of paths that we currently have on which we want to apply the survivor logic. We're going to create an empty list called survivors and at the end of this function we will return it. At the end of this algorithm, this list of survivors will contain half the old generation because we would have eliminated the other half. So the first thing we do is to shuffle the old generation. After this we kind of logically break our input list into and we can do this by doing the length of the old generation divided by 2. And now we just need to combine those two parts of the list together. So we iterate over the range of midway, and now we need to compare together the old generation at i and the old generation at i plus midway. And between these two we need to choose the shortest root. So if total distance of the old generation at i is less than the total distance of the old generation at i plus midway, we should append to the survivors list the old generation at i, choosing the left hand side of our comparison. Otherwise we append to the survivors list the old generation at i plus midway, we choose the right hand side. We are now left with a list of survivors and we need to apply the second step, that of crossovers. And again over here we are going to divide this list of survivors in two, and we combine the top part with the lower part. And from these two paths, which we can call parents, we are going to create four new paths, which we can call offsprings. The kind of logical way to think about how these crossover works is to think that a part of one parent will be superimposed on to the other one. So if we copy the left parent over here, into our new offspring and then we choose a random sublist of our other parent, this is a small section of the right parent in our example, and we need to include this 4 and 2 in this example into our offspring. So to include this 4 and 2 we can remove these two numbers from our current offspring and we need to insert this segment into the same position that we have it in the parent. So we need to make space, so the 1 moves to the left, and we insert 4, and then we move the 3 to the right, and we insert the 2 over here. For the second offspring, we reverse the roles, a random segment from our left parent onto the right one. So from the left we take the 0, the 4, and the 1, and from the right we cannot take the 0, the 1, and the 4, because we've already used them, we are left with the 2 and the 3. And we continue in this fashion to generate the other two as well, always switching the role of the parent. Let's now implement this in Python. I have here two functions, one is called create offspring and the other one is to apply the crossover. The create offspring takes in two parents, parent A and parent B. This is the left and the right parent that we had in our example. And the result of this function is to create a new offspring. So we create this empty list and return it at the end. Next we create two variables called start and finish. This will be the segment that we will apply from one parent and transpose it onto the other one. The segment needs to be random, so we do random.random .random integer starting from 0 up to the length of the parent a minus 1. And the finish needs to be also a random number from the start, needs to be bigger than the start variable, up to the length of the parent a. And we can store this particular segment in a variable called sub path from a, and this is the parent a starting from the variable start up to the finish. And now we need to remove all the occurrences that we have in this sub path from the other parent. So we create a variable called remaining path from b, and this is going to be a list, and we are going to iterate over every item in parent b. If the item is not in the sub path from a, we include it in this list. Next we are going to iterate with i over the range starting from 0 up to the length of parent a, and now in this loop we need to choose whether we take one item from the sub part from a or from the remaining part from b. And we always take the one on the front, so we can do pop 0 on both of these variables. Now if i 
is less or equal to the start variable and it's also less than the finish variable it means that we need to choose from the sub part from a otherwise we should choose from the remaining part of b and whatever we choose we need to append it to our offspring list now we need to call this function over our entire survivors population so this function accepts a list of the survivors that is the result of the previous step inside this function we create a list of offsprings and at the end we will return them again we divide this survivor list in two by doing length of survivors divided by two and we start a loop for i in range of midway and we choose both parent a and parent b to be the survivors at i and the survivors at i plus midway now we just need to call the create offspring function with parent a and parent b and then we call it again with the roles inverted with parent b and parent a and we need to append both these results to our offsprings list if we just do this with two parents we end up with two offsprings we want four to double our population so basically we just need to repeat this step twice the final step of our genetic algorithm is to apply mutation on a small percentage of our population in fact we should apply mutations on less than one percent of our new generation so what we can do is iterate over every entry that we have in our new generation and every time we throw this kind of virtual dice and if it is a particular number then we decide to apply a mutation on that part and to apply the mutation we just need to choose two random elements of that part and we swap them around let's implement this in our function called apply mutations accepting this variable called generation this is our list of parts that we have generated with the crossovers inside this function we are going to create a variable called generation with mutation and at the end of this function we just return it and then we iterate over every single part that we have in the current generation and we append it to the final result however before we do that we want to check whether we want to apply a mutation to this particular part or not so if random dot random integer between 0 and 1000 is less than 9 meaning that this if statement will only be triggered on less than 1% of our population and inside this if statement we need to apply the mutation so we choose two random integers between one and the length of part minus one remember that we need to start from one and not from zero because we'd always start from zero and we assign these two random integers to the variables index one and index two and next we say part at index one and part at index two is equal to part at index two comma part at index one swapping the values of these two around and finally over here we have the three steps together we have this function called generate new population that accepts the old generation and it first chooses the survivors the first step then applies the crossovers and finally applies the mutation returning a new population and this function will be called a number of times until we converge to a solution what you see over here is generation number 50 we have gone through this survivor crossovers and mutation steps 50 times and you can kind of see already that the planes are not all over the place immediately and also the red plane that is representing the shortest distance out of this entire population seems to be following a less of an erratic path the red plane has now arrived you can see that the total distance is 5800 in our previous run it was more than 8000 so we have already improved the solution it's of course not the optimal solution so let's move the generation counter forward up to generation 99 and it looks now that there are less planes in the simulation in reality they are stacked on top of each other all the populations that we have have kind of converged into a few solutions that mostly are the same and our red plane seems to be following a route that is much more efficient once it arrives at the place where we started from which in this case it happens to be Malta we can see the total distance and the total distance was 5129 units a much shorter route than the ones we have seen before so this was an example of how we can implement a genetic algorithm if you like these kind of videos please subscribe to the channel and also check out the links in the description for the full source code and for books and materials on this subject